Well, here we are at uh, the homestead here. We'll just call it that. <laughs> and uh, I thought I would show you guys one of my new guns. Um, this is a H and R handy rifle in uh, 450 Marlin. And I'm sure at least a few of you are saying, "What in the world is a 450 Marlin?" I'm gonna have a video coming up before long about exactly what the 450 Marlin uh, is why it was created and why it kind of became an obscure cartridge well it is an obscure cartridge but honestly i like the 450 marlin and uh in the video i'm going to go over kind of some of the reasons i think that it was kind of a misunderstood and mismarketed cartridge but just know that this is kind of like a <clears throat> the 450 marlin is the equivalent of a pretty hot loaded 4570 that's really all you need to know it, it, it a lot of people liked to call it uh like a modern 450 or a modern 4570 and that's kind of what it was but it's really it has more in common with the 458 win mag than it does anything else it's essentially just a shortened 458 win mag to two inches but anyway i'm gonna talk about that later in another video that i make but i just wanted to show you all this is a it's a h and r uh ultra hunter handy rifle and uh, if any of you have ever, ever owned one of these rifles you know exactly how cool of a gun these things were and uh, this in my opinion was essentially one of the nicest ones that you could get a lot of people didn't like the 450 marlin but that wood stock right there and that nice blued finish made this one of the nicer handy rifles to get uh, the other 450 or I'm sorry the other handy rifle I have is in um, 4570 and it's not nearly this nice like the finish on the receiver is like kind of a, a dark matte finish and then it's got kind of a just a, a regular old black uh, stock and that stock's fine and that gun is fine I've killed plenty of deer with it my wife actually killed two deer with that gun this deer season but this one, in my opinion, was just just one of the nicest handy rifles you could get. And this uh, butt stock back here is really thick, really tall, and really solid. And it gives it a lot of weight at the back end of this rifle to uh, kind of soak up a little bit of that recoil. Because the 450 Marlin kicks quite a bit more. Well, not quite a bit, but it kicks a good bit more than, uh, say, uh, uh, old classic 405 load of uh 4570 wood if you bought it from like walmart or something these are um 325 grain hornady xtp cartridges this is uh about all you can buy anymore i've kind of got a stockpile of an old load you could get from hornady which was like a 350 grain uh flat nosed jacketed soft point uh, they don't make those anymore, so I'm trying to kind of buy any any of those that I find, and I've got about, I think about four boxes. And a good thing about those compared to these, these FTX rounds, uh, Hornady shortens the brass on them. So if you're going to reload these cartridges, you can, but you kind of have to load them exactly like Hornady has here. You kind of have to put the FTX bullet in there with the this exact load, which isn't entirely bad because what these what I use these for is mainly just uh just white tail hunting or uh really you, you can use the 4570 or a 450 marlin you can use them for whatever you want to use them for really uh they're good for deer and anything else so these are great for deer so that's probably just what i'm gonna keep loading and i'll save those 350 grain uh for if i ever go bear hunting or hog hunting or anything that calls for a little bit more penetration i've got a leopold rifleman uh 3 to 9 by 40 rifleman scope on here it says rifleman i thought it was a vx1 uh i don't know doesn't really matter to me they're good scopes i like little bold they're real good scopes look at the bore size on this thing oh yeah 450 marlin uh i'll tell you the story behind this i when we had i had my 4570 back in like high school that was around the early 2000s so like 99 to 02 or something and uh i had my 4570 
and I had a 300 Weatherby mag that everybody in my family hated, including me. It wouldn't shoot worth a crap. Uh, I even sent it back to Weatherby a couple times. Weatherby couldn't make it shoot, so I sold it. And I traded it even for a gun just like this. 450 Marlin with a Woodstock, uh, H&R Ultra Hunter, handy rifle and all that. And uh, I killed a few deer with that gun, but I kind of thought it was too much for deer. Because at the time I was young, as a kid, I shot deer a lot of the times uh, with angling shots. Or I'd shoot uh, straight through the deer if it was facing me. I never would wait for a broadside shot. Just as soon as it stepped out, I'd shoot it. Well, I tore up a lot of meat doing that with this 450 Marlin. So I got rid of it. Um, because my 30 out 6 and uh, didn't seem to do that quite as much my 450 uh my uh, 4570 definitely didn't do that as much uh <clears throat> but years later i've kind of grown up and i thought uh, i just uh nowadays whenever i'm shooting a deer I, I always try to take a broadside shot and i got to thinking about it and i was like well you know i could have probably put that 450 to good use had i kept it uh so i found this uh online and bought it and uh, just to kind of relive my old memories because honestly the older I get the more I kind of wish I had all those guns back because I've sold a lot of guns and traded a lot of guns over the years and I've gotten to where I really just kind of wish I had them all back because a gun in your collection that you don't care about today a few years down the road maybe even five or six years down the road you may all of a sudden pull it out of the gun cabinet one day and it'll feel like you're getting a new gun because all of a sudden you do care about it and you're glad that you have it so <clears throat> that's kind of what I've run into. Every gun that I've ever gotten rid of, you know, a few years down the road, I'm like, hey, you remember that gun I had? I wish I had that back. That's kind of what this was. I didn't find the exact gun that I had, but I, had, I found one just like it and got it. And uh, I just got done sighting it in on uh, one of those trees over there at about 60 yards, or I'm sorry, about 50 yards. And uh, <clears throat> the way I normally do that is at 50 yards, I make sure I'm shooting about an inch or a little more, inch, inch and a half high and to me i just call that good because most of my deer are going to be killed within uh, 50 to 60 yard ranges uh but you know zeroing it in a little bit high uh that means that if something happens to walk out a little further then uh, i'll have uh, plenty of cushion to uh, put the bullet where it needs to go but anyway i just thought i'd show you guys this gun uh i'm actually going to do a video later on maybe next month about um the, the the handy rifles that i have because i've got three of them now <clears throat> and go over kind of their history because uh they were they were owned by they were, these were made by marlin and uh then remington of course bought marlin and then remington were making these for a little bit and then remington killed the handy rifle which made everybody mad because these are actually you know they're exactly that. They're a handy rifle. They're, they're a no-nonsense practical gun. They're really good. If you ever come across a handy rifle and wonder, is this some kind of a cheap Walmart gun? It's really not. They're just a practical, good shooting gun, and um, you should pick one up if you find them. But uh, that's it for today. I'm going to have that handy rifle video coming out later, and I'm also going to have a video on the 450 Marlin coming out later. Uh, until next time, see you later. Bye.